Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people think that they can do what they want, when they want, because they're better than everyone. And in today's episode, guys, a psycho Karen attempts to kidnap her own daughter after losing a custody battle against her husband. And guys, this story is crazy. I hope you enjoy the tales today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, story submissions can be sent to this email right here. We're diving in. So here in Australia, there's a wildlife law that any house cat can be outside from sunrise to sunset. And my entitled neighbors knew that, as I stated it once or twice, after they confronted me of my cat being outside running around. Now this happened a couple of weeks ago, which still makes my blood boil thinking about it. There was a huge thunderstorm here, and due to the loud noises of thunder, my cat took off to find shelter. After the storm settled, my partner and I spent the next 3-4 to four hours looking for him in places where cats would usually hide to escape rain. When morning came, the entitled neighbor's grandson, this idiot of a person, was outside the front tending to his car. When I asked if he had seen my cat, the guy responds with, maybe he went looking for food because you're not feeding him enough. Or maybe someone put him out of his misery like your other cat. Knowing that my other cat passed away from being poisoned, the guy just laughed and went inside. I then asked my entitled neighbors if they saw my cat, and they denied it, even mentioning what their grandson had said, and they waved it off saying, oh boys will be boys, he loves your cat, he won't hurt him. So 14 days pass, and I use up every possible way to locate my cat. I posted him on Facebook groups, put up signs, and even asked the local vet and animal shelters if someone handed over a cat fitting this description. Giving up hope of him ever returning, I visit my neighbors to hand over some mints to give their cats and dogs. When I noticed that in their living room window, it was my cat. They had kidnapped him for nearly three weeks, hiding him from sight when we were going door to door calling his name. I later learned from their granddaughter that they even paid their great grandkids in candy not to tell us they had him. When I confronted them, Karen stated in exact words that they did not appreciate that my cat was outside all day. So they took him to teach me a lesson, a lesson that I'll hopefully learn. Naturally, I took him back, after a few choice words to both of them. They've since decided to try to take my cat back, twice. I called the cops and it stopped. Yeah, if I were in OP shoes, guys, I would have called the cops as soon as I saw my cat in their living room window. Let them deal with it. Like, what crazy neighbors, though. Yeah, yeah, let's just steal this person's cat to teach them a lesson. And guys, I can't believe they went the extra mile by paying their grandkids in candy to stay quiet. Like, some people really need hobbies, I tell you. So on this day, my partner and I were on a train on our way home from having a nice evening out when I encountered a Karen who was not only rude, but she was racist. The woman was sitting across from us, and she noticed that we weren't speaking the local language to one another, and it offended her, so much so that she decided that she wasn't gonna let us get away with it. As often happens with locals here, she also assumed that we couldn't speak the local language. Little did she know, I'm fluent. So the conversation, which was hilarious, went something like this. Karen says in English, Hey, you are noisy. Be quiet. To which I respond in Japanese, I'm sorry, but you're the one who's shouting. Karen then says in English, Why you no speak Japanese? This is Japan. You speak Japanese here. I then respond in Japanese, I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't you speak Japanese? Why are you speaking English to me? Hearing me say that, Karen is super mad now, and she's still trying to speak English, saying, You are noisy. Get out of Japan. Go back to your country. She then starts yelling over and over for us to get out and go back to our country, this time in Japanese. The man sitting next to her finally had enough, and he told her to mind her own business and to leave us alone, that we weren't doing anything wrong. It's at that point she turns on him, but because he's also Japanese, she couldn't tell him to get out of Japan. So she settled on shouting at him that he should not use his laptop on the train as that's against the rules. It's illegal. Also telling him that he was bothering everyone with his disrespect and rudeness, which he wasn't. The guy just ignored her, and he said nothing more as she shouted at him for 15 minutes. The train then stopped at a station, and Karen got off. She continued shouting as she went out the door, and she started shouting from the platform as the doors closed. At the last second, I said, Goodbye, angry Korean lady, just as the door closed, and she freaked out and punched the doors. 
Now my partner was a little upset at me for egging her on like that, but I've long gotten past the point where I'm tolerant of racists, so I don't feel bad about it. And not only would I do it again, I'll likely get another chance, because this sort of thing happens every few months. There's always another racist Ken or Karen around the corner. You know what, I never thought that I'd ever read a post about a Japanese Karen because I've always heard that people in Japan are so freaking polite. But I guess there's Karens all over the place, right? Like, what an absurd reason though. OP speaking English to their partner doesn't affect her in any way, so she needs to mind her own damn business. And I feel so bad for that man who stood up for them and got berated for 15 minutes. Some people, I tell ya. So I decided to go camping again for the first time this year because of spring break. So I only got the weekend to go. It was just enough for me to unwind, and that's when I had to deal with a lunatic Karen. I'd already spent one night at my campsite. I was loving the fresh air, and fortunately the rain was minimal. I was far from alone, as the spaces around me were full of tents, trailers, and RVs. Plenty of people caught the camping bug during spring break, just like I did. So I was sitting relaxed in a folding lawn chair, watching a cartoon called Tailspin on my portable DVD player. I had my headphones on because other campers were playing music, barbecuing, and doing other things. I was just chilling, letting myself mentally zone out with some cold beer, when suddenly I got a hard tap on my shoulder that frankly scared the crap out of me for a second. And that's when I turned around to see a middle-aged woman in over-tight purple yoga pants with her hands on her hips. She didn't have the Karen haircut, but she did have the bleach blonde hair and overly large bug-eyed sunglasses. Now I know in this situation, a lot of people will say, can I help you? But that's just giving an opening to these people to say whatever they want. So my first reaction was to say, what? Can't you see I'm trying to relax by myself? And that tactic worked. That set her back for a second, but the woman didn't go away. So I paused the episode I was on and I grumpily asked her what she was bothering me about. She then spoke up in a matter-of-fact way that sounded like she was trying to be in charge. I guess she was trying to activate mom mode on a stranger. But I think the unfriendly scowl on my face was enough to show that I'm not exactly friendly. She then points to the portable DVD player I had, and she said she wanted to borrow it and the headphones for her daughter. Now to make it brief, I said no, and no is a complete sentence. I don't know her, I don't know if she'd be bringing it back, and I certainly don't know if her kid would or wouldn't damage it. I also actually keep a smaller backup DVD player in the camper, but I wasn't about to let the woman know that. Well, she certainly didn't take being told off like that well, and she launches into a tirade about how I was a grown man watching cartoons, and how they only have one TV in their RV, and their daughter needs something to watch because the kids can't agree on what to watch, so she needs my DVD player. At that, I coldly said that that wasn't happening, and she actually gave me a loud, well, why not? So I pointed out to her that this was really not my problem, and she just crossed her arms and said that as an adult, I should be putting kids first. I told her that would be the case if I had kids, but her kids are not my kids. I don't know them, I'm in no way related to them, and therefore I have no obligation to them. At that point, she rolls her eyes, and she tried to offer me money for my headphones and DVD player. The woman offered me 20 bucks for both, and I told her no, to kindly leave me alone to watch movies in peace, and she didn't take that well. At this point, she proceeded to try to grab my DVD player from right in front of me, and to walk off with it. And that's when I got up and said, that ain't yours, lady. She then proceeded to try to shove me over, try being the word. I end up grabbing her arms and shoving her back with a little effort. She then fell on some wet grass and she starts yelling that I attacked her while looking around for support. Now I've seen enough Karen stories to know where this goes if I say nothing, so at that point I yelled, yeah, assault, assault on me when you tried to push me over and steal my stuff. And there's plenty of witnesses around lady or did you not notice? Now there was already a few people around us watching the whole altercation, and they had gotten quiet while staring. So I said to everybody, check it out, we've got a bona fide Karen here who tried to take my stuff for her kid. Everybody clap for her. The Karen looked completely humiliated, and she stormed off screeching that I was an a-hole. I then tried to resume watching the DVD as I was, but I felt uneasy that Karen might come back, and I didn't want to risk that again. So I packed up, went back inside my camper to continue watching and drinking inside. I stayed at the campsite for one more night, and I didn't see Karen again until I was leaving Sunday afternoon. I saw her standing by her RV with a large fountain beverage in one hand and a dog leash in the other. 
It was one of those yappy little fluffball dogs too. The woman glared at me as I drove past and I waved at her and said, bye Karen, and that's when she threw her drink at my truck. I could hear her yelling at me, but couldn't make out a word of it. I'm not sure what goes on in the heads of those people. I understand that this could have gotten a lot worse. Like that nut bar sicking a local ranger on me or something. But I think the public humiliation was enough to make her back off. I can only wonder what the rest of her family's like. Yeah, so from reading a lot of these posts, guys, it really seems that families are embarrassed when their Karen moms do something like this, so there's a good chance the family's not that entitled. Like, they probably had no idea she went off to try to harass OP for his DVD player. With that said, though, like, forget the TV and the RV, lady. You're taking your kids camping to be outdoors. Take them on a hike. Teach them how to skip rocks. Just enjoy being in nature. This story happened in the summer of 2021, when I was working as a nanny. I was hired for the summer by a relatively wealthy man, who I'll call John, to take care of his 9-year-old daughter, who I'll call Ellie. She was such a warm-hearted and sweet young girl. If anything, she was really shy and introverted. So this story starts right off the bat on my first day. I get to the house, and I notice a few windows were broken, and they had boxes covering them. I asked John about it when I came inside, and the following conversation happened. I basically asked him, Hey, John, uh, what happened to the windows? At this, he looked at me and flinched and said, Well, as you already know, Ellie's mother and I are divorced, and I have full custody. And currently, there is a restraining order against her. Well, her mom showed up this morning demanding to see Ellie and to have her stay with her. When I refused and told Ellie to go upstairs, she started throwing things out the windows, and she left. I made a police report. I then asked, was she arrested? And he shook his head saying they couldn't find her, but I called my lawyer and when they do find her, she'll be arrested for breaking the restraining order. At that, I nodded and I was about to ask what to do if she shows back up, but that's when Ellie called for us and we decided to stop. Ellie came in and we went about our daily routine and John worked from home today just in case, but she never came. I go about my business, what I was hired to do, and a few days go by and we don't see or hear her. Me and Ellie are getting quite close, and we enjoy our time together playing games and going outside. A week later, I get to work, and Dad's telling me that he has to go in for a meeting for work, when all of a sudden, we hear a loud bang. The front door gets kicked multiple times, and then I hear screaming saying, Let me in. I want to see her. She's my daughter. You have no right to keep her from me. Hearing this happening, I look to John, and he tenses and takes a deep breath. He then gestures upstairs, and I know what he means, so I run upstairs, go to Ellie's room, and she's getting ready for the day, and I tell her to get back in the corner. I don't know this lady, and I don't know why the restraining order is in place, but I wasn't gonna risk her hurting Ellie. I tell Ellie to put on her soundproof headphones and to watch her tablet. I can tell she was scared and was trying to ask what was happening, and at that I smiled and said, everything's fine, don't you worry. I know she had an idea, but I wanted to try as hard as I could. I heard yelling downstairs as I put her headphones on. The woman got in somehow. I think John opened the door to tell her to leave, and that's when I heard footsteps upstairs. The woman starts banging on the bedroom window, screaming Ellie's name as I called 911. I told them the address, the situation, and as I did, the door swings open. I quickly slammed the door and got myself between them, and that's when Karen screams, Who are you? Are you his new girlfriend? Get away from my daughter. She's mine. I wasn't moving at this point. I told her that I'm the nanny and there's no way she's getting past me. I then heard a small knock on the door and it's Ellie saying, Mrs. B, uh, what's going on? Can I come out? I then look at the mom and the mom yells, Ellie, come out. It's mommy. You have to come talk to me. You can come live with me, honey. At that, Ellie doesn't respond and John comes upstairs and says the police are on their way and she'll be arrested when they get there. Finally, the woman leaves, telling Ellie through the door to unblock her number so they can talk. And she leaves. The cops come, and she's long gone. We make a report, and they leave. And you think that's over, but oh no. John's worried about leaving, but he has to make this meeting for his business. I told him it's gonna be okay, and to just go. When he leaves, I have Ellie downstairs sitting with me, and we're making bracelets. She's very on edge. Even the slightest noise makes her jump. After a few hours, she's a bit better. She's laughing at some videos with me when all of a sudden I hear a knock on the door. I check the camera and it's not her. I use the doorbell speaker and ask who this woman is. The woman asked if the car outside is mine and I said yes it was. The woman told me that she hit me backing out of her driveway and I face palmed. Could this day get any worse? So I go outside, did the insurance thing with the neighbor, 
and after a few minutes, I hear the front door slam and my blood goes cold. I run back to the house as fast as I can, and I run inside and hear Ellie scream. I can see the mom grabbing Ellie and trying to drag her from the couch, and that's when I automatically push the mom aside and put myself between Ellie and her. While the mom recovers, I tell Ellie to grab my phone and to call 911, and that's when I'm face to face with a gun. The woman screams, you dumb bitch, move aside, I'm here for my daughter and I'm not leaving without her, she's mine. I don't give a damn what the courts say, she's my daughter and they have no right to say I'm unfit. He's been hurting her and I know it. Now I've never heard this before and frankly I didn't believe it, but I still figured that I had an opening so I said, if that's true, then call the cops, they'll take your view into account. At that the woman says, no, the courts and police don't get to decide what rights I have and what I don't have. I'm taking her from her father, now step aside, I'm not asking again. I then shake my head and say, I'm sorry, but my job is to watch over Ellie and to keep her safe, and I can't let you take her. Briefly, I close my eyes, expecting a bang, and that's when Ellie speaks up saying, Mom, I don't want to go with you, don't hurt her. The only one who hurts me is you by doing this. Now to say I was shocked was an understatement. The woman says, you don't mean that. That's your dad turning you against me. I'm your mother and you will do what I say. Now come here. Ellie responds, no mom, the cops are on their way. If you hurt Mrs. B, they'll see it. At this point, there was a look of realization across her face and without another word, she tucks and runs out the front door. I run after her to see if she was in a car, and she was. I quickly took things to memory like color, make, model, and the person driving the car, and the woman wasn't alone. She takes off, and after 5 minutes, the cops arrive. I'm in the living room holding Ellie, comforting her, telling her she's safe, and that she was so brave. To quickly explain everything else, the police take my statements, dad comes home, and I explain through tears about how I was so stupid that I left the front door unlocked. He assured me it wasn't my fault, and that he was thankful that I was willing to protect Ellie with my life. The mother was arrested for a number of charges, breaking a restraining order, attempted kidnapping, attempted murder, and breaking and entering. Later on, I was called as a witness, and filled out reports. But the mom took a plea deal for like three years in prison, as long as she signed over her rights. Or they would go to trial, and she risked like 15 years. So she signed. Unfortunately, I had to leave this nanny job. Ellie gave me the biggest hug on my last day, and John gave me a goodbye gift that was actually a brand new Prada bag that was worth like $1,300 as a goodbye present. He gave me my last check in an envelope, and he just smiled and said to open it when I got home. I agreed and said goodbye. When I drove home, he tripled my pay, which I made like $800 a week. Inside was a note saying the rest was for school. I was studying child psychology to be a child therapist and he knew that and said that I would be great at it and if I ever need a reference to call him. It's only been a few years now but I occasionally hear from Ellie and we do talk for a while. Her dad is engaged now and Ellie really likes her and calls her mom already. Nothing made me happier. I'm so glad that Ellie was able to come back from this trauma and that I could help in this situation. It's easily one of the craziest things I've ever been through but I got through it okay. Wow guys, like all I have to say is that woman was completely bonkers, and I can see why they got the restraining order on her. Like, I understand that losing custody of your child does suck, and I have read that it's not uncommon for one parent to kidnap their own child away from the other. Like, I don't know if it was desperation that got her to that point, or if she was already unhinged, but all I can say is I'm glad nobody was hurt. Alright, so I went to a shop today and the service there was really slow, with only one register open. It was a really long line of people with a majority of them having full carts of items, and I on the other hand only had one item. Behind me was an old lady, and a mom with a baby. The old lady starts telling the mom to skip waiting in line and to go to the front because she has a child. That's when I turned to her and told her that I don't agree that mom skips in front of me. The woman starts arguing with me, and I said that this checkout does not give priority for pregnant people and parents, so she should wait in line like everybody else. And if she's unable because of a baby, she shouldn't be bringing the baby to the store with her. The old lady starts ranting how she's never seen behavior like this before, and how I will understand when I have kids of my own. To which I said, if. And then she starts telling me how my life will be horrible if I don't have kids, and how I lack empathy and I'll regret my decision, to which point I tell her to F off because I was tired of her BS. 
The older woman and mom then start talking about me and my behavior between themselves, and the mom then complained how she feels uncomfortable existing in a public space because of people like me. Now, I absolutely have no problems with kids. I don't hate them, they've never bothered me, and parents in general here are able to control their kids, so they're never a problem. However, in this particular situation, a child was calmly sleeping in a stroller, and I just don't see a reason why she should have a privilege to skip a line when she has a baby. I'm a mom, so my time is more important than yours doesn't cut it. I'm just tired of parents feeling entitled, just because, without an adequate reason. So am I the a-hole. So I'm sharing this post, guys, because it seems really divided, although a majority did vote OP, not the a-hole. So a lot of people are saying that OP is in the wrong in this situation for inserting himself into the conversation and not minding his own business. Like the older woman was only suggesting that the mom skip in front, like she didn't actually do it. And a lot of people are saying that OP unfairly attacked the mom when it was the old lady who suggested it. So yeah, in my opinion, everyone sucks here guys, like just keep quiet and wait in line. There's no reason to start fights and arguments in line. Everyone's just trying to check out and go home. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I will link it right here. It's another r slash entitled people. So if you missed it, go check it out. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.